Hello. This is a video on introduction to congruence. This is a number theory video. This term congruence in number theory is used to show that two numbers are going to be congruent mod some integer. This is different than the term congruent in geometry where you might have angles that are congruent or triangles that are congruent. A lot of the properties are the same. Let's review our definition of divides because this comes down to divisibility again. The definition of divides is probably the most important definition in number theory. A divides B. A divides evenly into B, if and only if. There exists K in the integers. Such that AK equals B. Very important definition. Now let's look at the definition of congruence. Definition 12. Let M be a positive integer. We say that A is congruent to B modulo M if M divides A minus B where A and B are integers. I'm going to restate this. Definition of congruence modulo M. We have A, B, and M integers. And we like our modulus to be positive. So M is going to be greater than zero. A and B might be negative. A or B might be negative. A is congruent to B mod M. And this is our notation. If and only if. M divides evenly into A minus B. This goes both ways, as most definitions should. If you know that two numbers are congruent, then you know a divide statement. On the other hand, if you know a divide statement, you can conclude a congruence. Congruence modulo M is indicated with the three bars. Let's look at some examples. 22 is congruent to 15 mod 7. Why do we know this? Because 7 divides 22 minus 15. 7 divides 7. 22 is also congruent to 8 mod 7 because 7 divides 22 minus 8. Because 22 minus 8 is 14, 7 divides 14. Maybe you can see the pattern. What's my next statement? 22 is congruent to 1 mod 7. This is not a super hard concept. However, it is a new wording, and we do have new notation. And any time we have new notation, we have to grapple with it. One more example. Let's do mod 13. 41 is congruent to 2 mod 13. And the reason this is true 
is because 13 divides 41 minus 2, and this is true because 13 divides evenly into 39. All right, so let's return to our textbook. I'll let you read example 24 on your own. It's a good example. Then we have a whole slew of theorems. It turns out that congruence, the triple bar, acts very similar to the double bar, the equal sign. Property one is the symmetric property. If A is congruent to B mod M, then B is congruent to A mod M. It's transitive. If A is congruent to B mod M and B is congruent to C mod M, then A is congruent to C mod M. It's also reflexive. A is congruent to itself. They didn't include that. Maybe we should prove that here as an example. Now, if we look at our um, foldable from week one of the course and look at the properties of equality, We have the addition property of equality, which means we can add a number to both sides. For example, three, the subtraction property of equality, which means we can subtract something from both sides. The multiplication property, multiply both sides by a number. And the division property of equality, you can divide both sides of an equation by a number as long as you're not dividing by zero. Now, in the case of congruence, Property three is the addition property of congruence, adding C to both sides. Property four, subtraction property. Property five is the multiplication property. I'm multiplying both sides of the congruence by C. Uh, property six, I'm multiplying by C and I'm also multiplying the modulus by C. Property seven is kind of an addition property of congruence. Eight is a subtraction property of congruence. And nine is a multiplication property of congruence. You'll notice what's glaringly missing, the division property. It turns out that you cannot randomly take a congruence and divide both sides by a number. The proofs of these statements are all quite straightforward because they use our definition. And our author has utilized the definition of congruence and the definition of divides. So let's go ahead and take a look here at number one. This is our given information. And this is what we're trying to prove. So we start with our given information. We know that A is congruent to B mod M. By definition, that means that M divides A minus B. By definition of divides, there exists an integer K such that MK equals A minus B. Now, if we multiply both sides of this equation by negative one, a minus B becomes B minus A, and we have M times negative K. So we have M times something equals B minus A. That means M divides B minus A, which means B is congruent to A mod M. This is using our definitions. Now, I would like to show you a slightly easier proof for number two, the transitivity. If A is congruent to B mod M and B is congruent to C mod M, then A is congruent to C mod M. So we take our given information. Our given information, A is congruent to B mod M. By definition, this means that M must divide A minus B. 
And similarly, if B is congruent to C mod M, then M must divide B minus C. Now, rather than using the definition of divides, I'm going to, uh, let, me, let me get my pen here. So all of these proofs are quite straightforward. Now let's prove that congruence is reflexive, that A is congruent to itself, mod M. It's kind of trivial, but we're taking baby steps here on day one, so let's give it a try. Proof. If A and M are integers, and M is positive, then A is congruent to A mod M. Now, we cannot use our conclusion to prove our conclusion. But we do have an eye on the prize, and we do know what's going to be the last line of the proof. So we might think about what's going to be the second to the last line of the proof. We start out all proofs by making the statement that we are making a proof. M divides zero. Any number divides zero because m times zero equals zero. But zero is a minus a. So m divides a minus a. Now we can use our definition of congruence mod m. a is congruent to a mod m. For emphasis, let me state this definition of congruence one more way. Let's say we have a rectangular package with a bow on it. Is congruent to a heart mod star. This is true if and only if the star divides evenly into the package with the bow minus the heart. This definition goes both ways. This has been a brief introduction to congruence modulo M. We'll be looking at this more in the practice problems and on the discussion board, and we'll get into it more next week. Have a great day.